Hey there guys, welcome to a look at the Amtrak Acela for Train Sim World 3. It finally released today, the 21st of February. And it is now available along with uh, New York to Trenton, uh, which is a route, and the Union Pacific SD70ACE uh, Heritage Pack, well, which I probably will not be taking a look at because it's just reskins. It's literally just reskins. But I will be taking a look at uh, New York Penn to Trenton. That should be the video following this one. But we're going to focus on the Acela. This thing really needs no introductions. It's quintessentially the most badass passenger train probably in North America. I'm sure others have other opinions about that. And that's, that's very, very fine. But this thing is a standalone loco. Uh, for those that aren't aware... It's going to come with three scenarios uh, for Boston to Providence, which is the route that we're currently on. And this route received an update as well. So it's got the new uh, lighting. Uh, it's got some new baking uh, in, in tunnels and in underground areas and things like that um, in, in the weather. I don't know if I mentioned that or not. And I, th I think they up upgraded some of the signaling or something like that. Uh, it comes with a timetable, of course, as well, because this is one of the termini for the Acela. This is Boston. This is the end of the Northeast Corridor. Uh, so you're going to get three scenarios and timetable for Boston Providence. And then you're also going to get a layered-in, uh, we'll say minimal, timetable for the New York Penn to Trenton route, if you have that. Of course, if you don't have that, that's not going to work. And it's 23 bucks. So... You know, the, the add-ons, I'm just going to cry here for a moment. The the add-ons such as the train sets don't seem as bad, being three more dollars uh, or whatever that translates to, wherever you're from. But here in the States, it's three more bucks. It's still three bucks. That's a gallon of gas. But the routes are now $39 instead of $30. So that's a big, that's a big increase. So it's still a bit much. As always, I'd probably wait for sales. Even the... the the pre-orders aren't really worth it. Uh, but anyway, a little bit about the Sela. It is obviously an inner city high-speed tilting train running from the Northeast Corridor to Boston, which is currently where we're at, uh, in Massachusetts, down to Washington, D.C., our nation's beloved capital. Uh, the first service ran was December 11, 2000. It makes about 13 stops between each termini, traveling about 450-plus miles. Uh, and an average about 20 services a day. The numbers for each uh, train set are 2100 through 2290. The top speed is essentially 150 mile an hour, but the average speed is about 70. Uh, and they, of course, are sadly being replaced by the Amtrak Avelia Liberty, which they just look weird as hell compared to this thing. When I, when I look at the current Amtrak Acela, the front of it, I think of RoboCop. It just, it looks awesome. It, it looks like late 80s awesomeness robocop i don't know that's that's what i get um so yes yeah, 2100 through 2290 uh they were contracted to spend about 800 million dollars on this project with bombardier austin uh for about 20 train sets because they are train sets entirely they're not broken up uh rarely ever if ever ever but they have two power cars at each end and six coaches in between uh, but the contract eventually led to a $1.2 billion payout. Each power car at the front and back has 6,200 horsepower. Um, and it's largely based on the TGV, the uh, French high-speed train, if you're familiar with that. Uh, power is obviously pulled from overhead line, uh, 25 kilovolts, 60 hertz, AC. Uh, and that's Boston to New Haven. And then it's 12.5 kilovolts, 60 hertz, AC from New Haven to New York. And then it's 12 kilovolts, 25 hertz AC, New York to Washington, D.C. So the first car is generally first class, and then it's business class, which is a quiet car. Cafe, business class, business class, business class, and then power car. And the horns generally are a hybrid K5LA, which sound really weird. I'm not a huge fan of the horns on these things. And they have an e-bell. All right. I just loaded in a service. I have not uh, looked at the tutorial because I think I've got a, a general uh, idea of how to operate this thing. But first things first, we're going to get out and take a look at the exterior. See if we can actually get out of here. 
Man, that door swings open. I've got the uh, the frame counter at the top right hand corner as well. Just to take a look. Um, let me get the HUD off here. Visually, the model looks pretty good. It looks pretty good. You got a lot of a lot of tar and bug splatter and all kinds of crap on the nose cone here. Um, Eh, that's that's a little muddy. I mean, the textures in Train Sim World are, are never super crispy. Um, thankfully, they're kind of held up by the models. Uh, let's look at the ditch lights down here. You can actually see a bulb in there. I mean, overall, the model looks looks pretty good. The logos are as where they should be. Um, and this is something else I saw a lot of people talking about. Like, oh, this was wrong and da-da-da. So this thing is largely stainless steel, right? The uh, the car bodies themselves and coaches. And then the nose cones in the top is just kind of painted or plastic. That's that's how they are. It's just, it just it looks weird in Train Sim World compared to uh, some of the photos you might see. Uh, undercarriage looks pretty good. Got the yellow step and the, uh, the twisted irons there on the step. And the door with the uh, grab irons either side. I mean, visually, you know, again, like I always say with a lot of uh, Train Sim World stuff, it's, you know, it's it's pretty par for the course. Uh, visually, the thing looks pretty good. The nice Acela logo there. And the lettering, the font looks correct. The logo looks good as well. We've got the uh, disabled person's logo and Wi-Fi. This is business class. We've got our, uh, God dang it. No. I hate when it asks that. So that will, that will change between, like, the next stop, uh, where you're currently at, where it's going, and things like that. Exterior windows are, uh, pretty nice as well. There's a little, little bit of muddiness around there, but that's to be expected with a lot of Train Sim World stuff. They do have the decals on here for, uh, emergency responders if they are needed so that's a, a nice little touch uh the coloring looks okay um i feel like everything always looks a little bit washed out in train sim world hopefully this uh mbta f40 won't run us over but uh overall looks all right let's get back over on the platform and we'll look on the other side There we go. Uh, the venting looks okay. It doesn't really look like a... I don't know. It doesn't really look like a mesh, per se, or like part of the model. It's just like a texture, texture kind of deal. Which stinks. Because that's a, that's a chungus, big chungus vent on that thing. Let's see. I'm just going to get free cam here. Yeah, that'll be much quicker. Alright, so we've got business class. There is a little bit of dirtiness on the top here, which is a nice touch. I like that. Connections look okay. We've got the bumpers, some chain electric cables in between yeah visually i don't think there's a whole lot to say these things look pretty damn good uh model wise i mean we've been stuck with the one for train some classic for so so long which never really was the best thing people tried the mod the bejesus out of it and it was still just uh you know the old lipstick on a pig deal uh forgive the flashing i am using dx12 which Dovetail does not want to implement or have you use, so you'll see flashing like that from time to time. That's that's not the root. That's just DX12. Uh, the tails look pink, as a lot of stuff does with this new funky lighting. Uh, but yeah, the train set looks good. The colors look a little washed out, but everything kind of looks washed out in Train Sim World, to be absolutely honest. I want to get on top of the power car down here. Probably should have done it in the light. Take a look at all the uh, the juicy bits up. Okay. Wow. This this looks pretty good. There's some weathering up here. Um, you know they're grimy. They they work the crap out of these things on a daily basis. 
Got the little uh, rods there to keep the arrow bits up. Kind of like a uh, suspension, if you will. The Pantos look pretty good. They've got some stickers on there. I'm not exactly what they look like. I've never been on the top of an Acela. I'm sure there's one or two out there that have. We've got the little arrow deals right there, which is pretty cool. Keeping them, uh, keeping them nice and... Ah! All right, yeah, top looks good. All right, cab. Cap, cap, cap. Let's turn the light on. Um, cab looks pretty good. I'm gonna I'm gonna hand it to him. I don't I don't know who did all this, um, but it looks pretty good. It it I feel like it doesn't look as good as some of the stuff from like the original Train Sim World where they put a little bit more attention to detail in, in just the depth of things and textures and the way they look. It's still a bit muddy. I mean, look at this. Just this corner right here. Stuff used to look better than this. I promise you that. And they uh, they just started cutting corners because they're, you know, cranking out content all the time now. I mean, they just released three frigging things on the same day out of the blue. They announced it, like, what, a week and a half ago? And they're like, hey, uh, this is coming. So, dovetail, doing dovetail things. Uh, yeah, the side console didn't look that great, but the front console looks pretty good. It's super discolored uh, from, you know oily arms resting on there and hands and you know some dry boogers and who knows what the hell else there's scratches and scuffs all over it'd be nice to see some of this this better like brush material in here instead of that low res crap and this around the bezel as well uh, the controls pretty much look like that dynamic brake reverser uh, power handle the acknowledge yeah, I mean, it did, did looks okay in here. The, um, I don't know, the MFDs, they look nice from a distance, but something just seems off about them from, from stuff that I've seen interior-wise of these. Um, I, I don't know if it's the coloring, uh, but it just, it looks a little funky. Like, it's, it's there, it's just knocking on the door trying to get in. Like, it's, it's there, it's just not, you know, in there. You've got the timetable lighting over here, so we'll turn the cab light off here. Let me get the uh, HUD back on. That's your that's your uh, timetable light. Or that is right there, actually. It's just the side light, which is nice. And they actually added a bit of color to that. And the reflection down here, this is almost realistic looking. This general area with the lighting down here on the top of the screen, that looks really nice. This area right here looks really, really nice. Uh... Let's go around and check what we can mess with here. Doors closed and locked. Normal. No motion bypass. Parking brake. Apply. And release. Snow brake. Not going to have to use that today. This is obviously your in-cab signaling. We should be getting that working here in just a minute. We'll take off after we get done looking around because once I'm going and this thing is so damn fast, I'm not going to have time to just, you know, dick around, looking around. Let's see what we got on the back wall here. Walkway light. Maintenance light. Activate cab. Do, 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 do. What is that, a VCR? Paper? Is that like a printer? I honestly have no clue what the hell that is. Little extra seat right there. Alright, I guess that's all you can do. And I did want to get in the back. So let's get in the back here. Where uh, the hot bits are. So that's the alerter cut in. We'll go ahead and cut it in. ATC, we're going to cut it in. ACSES, we're going to cut it in. Uh, we should be good there. So that's how you get your safety systems on. It's probably going to be most annoying here in a minute. But I think... I mean, there's not a whole lot of... Uh, I'm kind of stuck. There's like an invisible wall here. It sucks. What the hell, dude? You can even see it on the floor. Like the, the no-go line. That's lame. It'd be nice to walk back in there a little bit. I guess they had to model it because of the way the doors are. You know, in some locomotives, like German locomotives, for example, there's like an extra door here. So I guess they had to model it. They just don't want you going back there. 
Whatever. We'll go try this one here. It's probably going to be the same deal. Yeah. Lamo. We got some okay looking bits back here. But this isn't where the uh, the magic happens, so to speak. Got a couple labels on the door. We'll get that shut. Get that shut. The open window. Okay, you definitely don't want to be opening those when you're uh, at any kind of speed in this thing. You can operate the blinds up and down. Alright, pretty cool, I guess. Let's see, am I missing anything else in here? It's like a switch down there. What's that, like an ass air conditioner? That would be uh that would be lovely on hot days. All right. It is time. Oh, we need to open the doors. All right, reverser to neutral. We'll go ahead and throw it forwards and we'll unlock the right-hand side. You can see I've got uh ATC and ACSES on and cut in now. Let's see if we can mess with any of the MFD stuffage. Nope, 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 nope. Okay. We'll try this side. Nope, nope, nope. Nope, 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 nope. Okay. All right, and horn test. It's got a very noticeable loop in it. So if I am not totally mistaken, I believe they got the sounds from Michael Cam, AKA Fan Railer. Now he's been making mods for commuter foamer stuff for like what almost a decade now probably more uh, for anything railworks back in the day you know and he did make stuff a little bit better but i mean it these are these are like his sounds and i you know i don't want to knock him in any regard but these are just like recorded freeware sounds essentially that are on something that's payware if you kind of you kind of get my gist um you know, yes, they are better than the average North American sounds that dovetail shats out whenever something uh, comes along like this. And they are a little bit better sounding, this horn interior sound anyway, than a lot of the Train Some Classic stuff in the past. And again, I'm not trying to dump on Fan Railer. Um, you know, I just feel like we, we need to raise that bar with sound. Like, sound is paramount in, a, in any sim. You know, train sim no less. And if this is going to have sim in the name, I digress. We got to have better sounds. We got to have better sounds. The sound okay, fine. The loop, not so much. Yeah. You know, like, it, it, it's an okay sample. It's just not, I don't think it's edited worth a damn. That's just my, you know, my two bits. There is occlusion inside and out with the uh, window open and closed, so that's nice. We'll go outside and listen. Yeah, the outside sounds worse than the inside. I don't really like the uh, exterior. We'll go, we'll go way, way far away and see if there's any kind of Doppler to it. We're holding up the uh, the poor commuters of the greater Boston area. Yeah, you should be able to hear a lot more than that from here. These things are pretty loud. Yeah, okay. Um, these things do have e-bells, right? I'm pretty sure they do. It sounds like an e-bell. An e-bell's an e-bell. Bell's fine. Cool, cool. All right, let's get the hell out of here. Did I not lock the doors? Let's shut that off. All right. I want to listen to what this thing sounds like when it's taken off here. There should be a notable uh, brake release. Did you guys hear anything? I didn't hear anything. We'll try this side.
Yeah, that's far too quiet. It's there's a little bit there, but uh, and I know people are going to be like, "Oh, it's that quiet in real life." It's not. You you can hear it. You can hear it. All right, so that's brakes release. Let's get out of here. Let's see what these uh, traction motors sound like again. Exterior with the little teaser videos that they released. I wasn't too thrilled about that, so uh, I'm I'm glad I can take my own look and the lights look nice as well I'd like to say they they dim the color down a little bit so it's not just like uh, you know burning your eyes down into your you know your your butt if that makes it doesn't make any sense but yeah they look okay so GG there with you know not bright ass white doctor office lights All right, let's double check All right, now this stupid F40 is making noise, naturally. All right, here we go. So, in real life, the fans on these things are loud as shit. They are super loud. You know, unless the engineer just kind of puts it in like 4% throttle, you're not really going to hear them, but they don't do that. They basically slam the thing forward and go. And the fans are super loud, super, super loud. So here we go. We'll do uh, 50%. Alright, I've got the, the throttle completely off and it's still making sound. And did you hear how like instantaneous it went from nothing to that? Like it like it ran through a bunch of different sounds it should have done. And again, I know people are gonna be like, oh my god, that's exactly what they sound like. You know, to each their own, I guess. But the the stuff I've heard and seen, it's the the sound has a lot more depth than that. This this sounds like some high pitch. It sounds like when you're I don't know, in, in your car at the car wash and you're going through the dryer bit and it's like just that, that high-pitched shrill sound. These things are like, this is like a deeper uh, in real life. So again, it's, you know, it's fan railer freeware sounds on a payware product. Um, but anyway, let's let's get on with it here. Uh, I'll cut this out, and when we get to back bay, we will resume. All right, we're approaching back bay now. After that, we should be able to get on the move a little bit until Route 128, I believe, which is like eight miles or so. But I've closed the window, and these things are fairly quiet inside. They're they're built to withstand you know, a freight train collision. I've seen a lot of stupid offhanded comments like, you know, America. Why does it look like that? America. You know, there's a reason. We have these things called giant freight trains that move commerce, and a lot of our passenger trains ride on the same rails, so they have to be safe. We don't have little puny-ass baby freight trains, and so these things got to play nice with them. That's why certain things look the way they do just want to get that out there anyway we're in back bay it looks like they did update the lighting we'll go ahead and get the doors open here it seems to break fairly nice there we go oh wow the sounds actually cut out that time with the uh, the the throttle off and it's only because we're stopped um, the the kind of one note sound on this thing is very funky I'm not not super duper crazy about it. Let's check the uh, blinds out here. Oh, we've got the camera in there as well. Big Brother is watching. Got to keep an eye out for spy balloons. Let's uh, get this back up, shall we? There we go. Yeah, interior-wise, looks pretty good. The, uh, the panograph does indeed work. I know a lot of AI trains have an issue with panographs, so I'll try and keep a lookout for anything passing by. Um, but yeah, I mean, visually, son of a bitch looks pretty good. I will give them that, absolutely. Uh, we're going to have to wait here for just a moment, so that's as good a time as any 
to uh, get out and look in the coaches back yonder. Man, them doors swing open with great fervor. All right. Got the little speaker there on the outside. The interior lighting looks okay. I feel like they've... You know what? I'm lying. I don't know what it looks like. I'm using a... <laughs> I'm using a, a lighting mod to, to dim the over washed outness, but it it looks better than normal. I'll say I'll say it like that. I should have removed the mod. Yeah, the, the mod thing I use dims lighting because Trains in World overall lighting is just crazy. It's over the top. Um, I'm assuming the shitter is inaccessible, so no water closet activities shall commence. We will try. No. No shitter for you. I'm deeply sorry, guys, for those that, that want bathrooms and train sims. You can get your agua right there. Does it make absolutely no sound? Okay. What do we got here? Push to open. Those don't work. Handbrake doesn't work. Emergency brake. Newspapers. Throw your New York Times in there. Uh, I noticed this on the little the little preview thing they did. The seats look pretty good. The the material is a little wank, but like the color and everything else look pretty good on these things. These are you know they're old, but they're fairly nice trains still. Uh, you know for what we got, they got the curtains over there which look nice. Can you actually operate those? I don't think so. What in the hell is this guy doing, sir? That's Geralt of Back Bay. <laughs> Oh, Jesus Christ. All right, we'll sit in the chair here. The the, the white hair. This is a Witcher joke for those wondering what the hell I'm talking about. Uh, look at this guy's shoes, man. He's got them crocodile loafers on. Drug dealer. Um, yeah, looks all right. I don't think you can open the table up. Yeah, you can't. But, yeah, the seats look all right. They look a little faded. Um, but, anyway, can we get past this? A hole. That's very strange. You've got the uh, interior bits to show you where you're going. Got your little kitchenette right here for coffee and all that good stuff. This looks fairly detailed. It looks all right in here. Fairly nice. This is the other business class. The first one was the quiet car, I think, or was that first class? This is the cafe car. It gets you some. Beverage alls. Hello. How are we? She's got her little... Oh, I thought that was like a book, but that's just her legs clipping through stuff. What does it say? Thank you for choosing Amtrak. Don't know if it really says that, but that's a nice little touch. Yeah, interior looks okay. Lighting looks okay as well. Like I said, I'm running a, a slight mod, which kind of dims lights, because... It it be looking too crazy sometimes. Um, all right, let's listen for the sounds. I'm gonna get back in the cab, and we'll go to the eight key. There we are. Go to the eight key, and we will close the doors. They're not super loud, like a lot of commuter trash, but uh, there are sounds. Yeah, I didn't hear anything. I didn't hear anything at all. All right, let's get out of here. All right, so let's look at our brake pressure. This is a passenger train, so air brake, passenger train, generally 110 PSI, so it looks to be 110 PSI. Uh, we look like we're good to go. We'll give her a little juice. Hit the bell. You can see the ditches flash. It'd be a good time to take a look at those, I guess. Look all right. The the lighting looks okay. I think what's helping the the headlights and general lighting on this train on the front is the way they are recessed. And there goes <laughs> God, dude. It's just like it's so instant. It it happens a little bit slower than that. I know people will argue and that's fine. But it 
it happens a little bit slower. It's it's like a there's like a no idle sound and then boom run sound. It you know it it takes a moment. Little little bit longer than than what's in this. All right, we are clear for thirty. So overall, this is fairly easy. There's guides out there. I think um, I think some people have done several guides on ATC. I'm, I'm probably never going to really delve into that, but it's it's fairly simple. Um, if if my dingus head can do it, then just about anybody can. This is overall track speed, 125 mile an hour, but you are currently clear for 60. That's your alerter going off. And the deal with this, uh, whenever you got to slow down and it's raging out at you with sound and everything else, I believe you got to put the brakes in suppression to uh, clear that because these, a lot of these signals will jump out at you. Fairly quiet inside. All right, we're cleared for 120. 100% max effort. Let's go. The horn is not responsive at all, so you can't do any any fun little foamer, you know, horn shows. Yeah, it's not very good. Response-wise, it, it feels okay. I feel like the acceleration could most definitely be dulled down a bit. And what sucks about Train Sim World is, yes, a lot of people mod Train Sim World, thankfully, and make things just a little bit better. But when it comes to physics, fat chance. Their whole stupid proprietary Train Sim World thing, whatever the hell it's called, um makes it very difficult to, to mess with things like that. And the editor's just completely locked down anyway, which is something that was promised that was then taken back and unpromised. Uh, things bouncing around quite a bit. Let's see if it tilts. It should have tilt, so the train cars will tilt above 60 miles per hour IRL. It looks like they kind of do, but uh, it's it's hard to tell. It's definitely not like the BR612 on the Verker uh, Dresden, or whatever the hell route that was. We do have it engaged, yes? Yeah, tilting is enabled. We're holding up all these MBTAs. Sorry. This thing bounces around quite a bit. Um, you know, they do move around, but this is a bit much. It's, uh, it's definitely got like a porpoising effect for you Formula One fans. It is most definitely bouncing up and down. Let's see if we can get a little lean. Oh, they do! Very nice! Very nice! Alright, that's cool. That's cool. Very cool. Um, yeah, signaling seems to be working as intended on this. Um, you know, I'd, I'd say so far it's a, a fairly solid add-on, which is, you know, doesn't leave my lips about Trains and World products, especially North American products. Um, you know, but I know some of the people that had a hand in in this stuff do give a shit on like dovetail management, you know, which just got that that churning wheels just getting content out. Um, I'm not seeing any kind of issue performance wise. Um, it seems okay. It honestly seems okay. I mean, sound wise, I I would like some some touches up on the sound. Those those fans need to be way more chunky. They're like. I don't know. It's like it's like standing in hurricane force winds. The 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 sound that these things. Just go watch go watch some videos of it on YouTube. Watch some that are made within the last like four years. Because if you're watching something from like ten years ago, it's gonna sound like ass. Um, and again, the horn sounds okay. And bell sounds okay. It's just the horn loop is a little funky, and I feel like it could have been edited as well. We'll go ahead and do a full brake test here. There's our suppression. We'll see how quickly it stops. A 
Braking actually seems okay on this thing. Um, I feel like the throttle could use a little work. It's a little too nippy. These things are powerful. They've only got six coaches in between two power cars with over 6,000 horsepower. So they are, but uh, it just feels a bit too nippy. Yeah, brake-wise, thing feels okay. Yeah, you see how the sound just immediately faded out like that? You know, I know there's a lot of little super thirsty train sim world foamers that are like, Oh my god, and they'll just take anything that comes out that's new. I'm sorry for you. Um, don't don't do that because they're just going to keep churning out half-assed content if you continue to do that. So please don't do that. I mean, people are still going to do it, but whatever. Um, that being said, I'm not saying this is bad, but things like that definitely could have been touched up and edited a bit more. A lot of people are just absolutely fine with things. You can you can see the same thing in the train sim classic community with uh, some products, which are just they're obviously cash grabs. But this is the Acela. I think most people that whether they're in North American trains or not are gonna pick this thing up because what it is. This is the premier passenger train for North America uh, on the Northeast Corridor, and. Um, you know, it's about to go the way of the dodo, and it just looks badass. Look at the front of that thing. Man, it's just absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. And it does look really, really nice. You can see a bit more weathering in the light here. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's okay. It's, it's definitely above average for a lot of the, the North American content dovetail bestow upon you. Alright, so we'll take a look at what you're going to get here. So we'll go to the trains, choose a route. We'll go to Boston Sprinter, which is Boston Providence, the very northern northeast corridor. And we'll look at the timetable. So we'll go ahead and click on this and see what we get. What is that, about 20? So it's about 20 services. And, you know, it's just Boston Providence or Providence Boston. You know, they're all, <laughs> it's all the same thing. And they're all going to take about 30 to 40 minutes. Um, that one there is a little bit longer for whatever reason. It must be some kind of layover. So, you know, that's that. It's not going to be too crazy. You know, it's just, it's, it's train some world. It's, it's very locked down, and it will always be. They want to control everything at Dovetail. So let's go ahead and go back, and we will look at New York Trenton and the timetable there. So if you have New York Trenton, this new route, which is kind of kind of like the middle part of the Northeast Corridor, um, you'll have this as well. You'll also have all these. So you'll have five operable units for the uh, New York pin to Trenton. But the seller. Uh, you've got quite, quite a few more services. Now, the thing about this route, and I'm not going to try to get too deep into it because I am going to do a separate video for the route, uh, they do have the full Amtrak timetable. As far as everything else, it is left and found very, very wanting, and people are pissed, as they should be, because it's corner cutting. They wanted to get this out on a specific date for whatever damn reason, and they did. It's, uh, it's got no Long Island Railroad, and it's got, like, a very slight percentage of uh, New Jersey Transit. And, of course, it doesn't have any SEPTA, because SEPTA license, that's why they ended it at, at Trenton. But I'm getting ahead of myself. So that's that. And then we'll take a look at, let me go back to Boston Sprinter here, scenarios. Let's see. So you get three. Three scenarios. So... 
I mean, yeah, that's that's that. Uh, overall, I feel like the price should still be nineteen ninety nine. It might be worth that. It's not worth almost twenty five bucks. Uh, it seems very limited. Boston Sprinter. Uh, Boston Sprinter is a nice route. I have not even looked at New York to Trenton yet. We will be doing that next. Um, but it's you know it's it's above average. I think the Acela is uh, is okay, and we'll be taking a look at that. Um, on the Northeast Corridor, New York, Trenton. So I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Found it somewhat informative and not totally ass kissy like a lot of the air quote ambassadors that you see a lot of the immediate videos when something releases because they rarely ever say anything wrong because they want to keep receiving free products. You know, why blame them? I, I try to do things the opposite way. But uh, that's just me. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.